those I've not yet had the opportunity to meet, my name is Will Hodgman and I'm Australia's new High Commissioner designate to Singapore. We're clearly doing things a little differently this year and I thank you for joining our virtual celebration. Australia Day is a time to celebrate our nation's 65,000 year history, to reflect on what we've achieved and what lies ahead of us. And at a time of immense challenge and change, Australia deeply values partners like Singapore. We've done some outstanding work together in responding to COVID-19, not just its health challenges, but in sustaining our economies. And I arrive ambitious for the bilateral relationship and I look forward to working with you to advance both our country's health, security and prosperity. While we cannot come together in person to celebrate Australia Day this year, I'm pleased to introduce Australian-based Singaporean chef, Audra Morris, who has prepared a recipe of lighter than air pandan flavoured lamingtons. This dish brings a delicious Singaporean twist to an Australian classic. And as Audra says, it's the best of both her worlds. Happy Australia Day, everyone. Hi everyone, my name is Audra Morris. I'm a chef and an author. Um, I was born in Singapore, I grew up in Singapore, and I've just spent the last 20 plus years in Australia. Uh, to me, there's so much about both countries that I absolutely love, and that's what I do for a living. You know, I introduce a lot of Singaporean cuisine to my Australian clients, and when I come back to Singapore, uh, it's a lot about introducing great, amazing Australian produce. Um, you know, once you've tried fresh ingredients, you can't go to anything else. So currently, I'm in the Australian High Commissioner's Residence Kitchen, and this is fantastic. And today, we're going to be focusing a lot on the best of both worlds. You know, this is such a great dish to make for Australia Day. You know, Australia Day is essentially the National Day of Australia, and it's about celebrating the country, the nation, the people, the produce, the the work ethic, the culture, everything about it. So combining a little bit of Singapore and a whole lot of Australia gives you these beautiful emblem lamingtons. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so first up, I'm going to pour my I've got about four egg yolks in here. I'm just doing a really small um, chiffon cake. I've got about just over half a cup of sugar in here. I'm only going to put um, a third of this in here because the rest of this will go into whipping up the meringues. Uh, oil goes in, about a third of a cup. Then the coconut milk goes in. So it's so simple, guys. All you need to do is pour everything together except for your egg whites because you're going to whisk that up to a meringue. Um, then, so we've got the flour that's going to go in here. I'm going to keep the rest of the sugar with my egg whites. In terms of pandan extract, what we want to do is give it maybe... Again, this has a very different um, fragrance. It's far more grassy. Um, very different to like the piece, so I want some of this in here. So I've got about two teaspoons, so maybe, so maybe about 10 mils. When you're actually making this extract, as little water as possible in your pulverizer, in your blender or food processor, and you really want to pulverize it to um, near nothing and then really squeeze out concentrated forms of this. Before I put this in, this, these paste a little bit goes a long way, so you really want to be a bit careful with that. So I'm just going to stir so you can see it's kind of a kind of a murky color at the moment and that's what natural pulverized leaves create so just to give it a touch of green i would say half a teaspoon these go a long way a little bit goes a long way and you'll be able to see the color changes white then the flour goes in. So in here I've got the flour as well as the baking powder. Um, so chiffons need a good amount of baking powder. So the flour goes in. Give it a good smooth whisk. So make sure all the lumps of um, flour is gone. Right? And geez, all I smell is pandan and coconut in here. And that's 
that takes me to another wall. It's lovely. All right, so we'll put this aside for the minute. With the meringue, I've got my five egg whites. I'm going to pour in here. Room temperature eggs, always better. And about a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. So you can add lemon juice or um, vinegar if you don't have cream of tartar. Just put it in there. It's just it helps to stabilize the meringue so that it doesn't collapse. I'm going to put it down and start it. So what I normally do is I start adding my sugar once the egg whites have popped up a little bit. So I find if you put it in right at the start, it weighs the egg whites down. It is really difficult. So much more work for the egg whites to kind of whisk itself up. So once it kind of gets a little frothy, we add in the sugar. Bit by bit. Okay, let's have a quick look. So what we want is for peaks like that, right? It's not super stiff, but it still holds its shape. So this is a risk, guys, but hello. Um, yeah, that's what we want to do, right? I'm just going to add a little bit of meringue. Try and use like a, a, a metal spoon or so, it would help. So if you look at the texture, it's quite soft still. It's kind of bit velvety but it still hold it holds its shape so don't go too far because it'll start to it'll really start to fall apart on you so I'm just gonna add a little bit in here I like soft pillows so the first little bit to loosen just be brave and just whisk it through you don't have to be too light-handed about it we're just trying to loosen up that thick flour better Now, if you're doing this for Halloween, it's a different story. Go super green if you want to, but um, uh, we're not. Okay, so now I'm going to start folding it in with my spoon. So maybe do this in a couple of different batches. And when you're folding, try... You know what? I think the way I see it is you want to do this confidently but don't kill it don't kill all the bubbles it's like clouds it's so oh, and it smells so good then these fluted cake tins chiffon cake tins do not need to be oiled um, that's how they kind of have their uh, maintain their lightness because don't forget once we once we bake this, it's going to have to cool upside down. So now I'm just going to pour it in. So I am introducing a new Leamington to Australia. Bit of same point, but it's Australia. So this now goes into a preheated oven. Now I often use 180, but Depending on how hot your oven is, you, know, you may want to kind of drop it down to 170. I prefer a long fan force, but if you have to use a fan force oven, just make sure you manage your temperature. It's usually a 10, 20 degree sort of difference with a con conventional oven. Um, but check it in for about 40, 45 minutes. Every oven is different, guys. So I really kind of encourage you to get to know your ovens before you decide how long things go in for. I got cakes ready. So important, flip it over immediately and that's the way the cake will stay until it's super cool. Now guys, whenever you're adding cream, icing and all that, you really have to make sure that your cake is super, super cool. Actually quite nice, a really good texture because I want my chiffon to be a little bit firmer than... Um, you can actually get these chiffons to be super soft but then it loses its shape. Because we're going to turn them into a lemon tip, 
uh, this recipe has a little bit more flour in it than what you might find um, on the internet. Also, what I've got here is pre-made creme pâtissier. So this is like my um, a go-to recipe that I use all the time. It's in all my cookbooks and it's, it's, a, it's a sure thing. With the extra egg white that you're using for your meringues, Chuck the egg yolks in here. Um, so I've got egg yolks, I've got coconut cream, again pandan extract and a little bit of that, um, that pure extract as well. A little bit of paste just to get some color that you want to. Uh, coconut milk, sugar and corn flour. So the corn flour is what thickens this up. Um, so if you can see it, it's pretty firm. So after you cook it, everything's cooked in a pot until it thickens and you lose that raw corn flour uh, sort of texture and flavor. I pour it into a container, like a heatproof container. These, uh, this is this is pretty good. Try not to put something that's too big. Then get some cling film and put it on directly on top of the actual custard itself. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lighten this up with some thickened cream. Now. This is what I use in Australia. It is fantastic. Um, it's already got a slight thickener in there, so it's actually very easy to cream up, to whisk up. Uh, so I'm only gonna put about a third of this. So for that amount, um, about 100 minutes of this. Let's get stirring. It's a bit sort of jello-y at the moment, so what we need to do is loosen this. In fact, you can do this in a food processor as well. Now, if it gets a little bit lumpy and stuck, don't worry, there is a way to get rid of it. So if you can see, it's, it's got a little bit lumpy there, right? And just press it through a sieve. Just chuck it on top. So when you're icing the cake, just make sure that you're, you're using sort of right proportions of like thick and cream as well. So you don't want to be too sloppy. Have a look now, it's a lot smoother. Right? It's so much smoother. Okay, time to make a lemon tin. So I've got sort of dried shredded coconut here. Now if you can get your hands on freshly grated coconut, it would be delicious as well. But the only thing about that is um, the coconut tends to go bad really quickly. So just to be able to last a lot longer, um, not that lemon tins ever last for that long after you put them on a, on a table, just get these dried shredded ones. You should be able to get this from most supermarkets in, in Singapore. I'm just going to spread them out because this is where, once I form my little lemmingtons, I'm going to roll it over the coconut here. So, shaping. This is always a bit of a challenge. Now, there's no reason why you can't have a big lemmington cake, right? So, uh, depending on how you want to do this, I'm going to try and do the little small ones. Serrated knives are always good for cutting cakes, guys. Don't put too much on the inside. Just a little bit of a smear. The top goes back on. So if you want to get them rectangular, I know this is like a round cake tin, so it's always there's always going to be um, leftovers that don't. So it's sort of in that Lovington shape. Then we're going to get some cream over the top. And a very light smear. This is really just going to help the coconut stick on. And from here, yay! We have our pandan Lemington. A little pandan. Just shake off some of the excess, dust off some of the excess. And there you have it, guys. Your little pandan Lemington.